going down! When you need secure transport without all the bells and missiles of the LAAT, look no further than the trusty new class shuttle. What's up, Nerds? Today we'll be learning all about the Grand Army of the Republic's new class shuttle. Everything from stats, history, role, and more, using all canon and legend sources. Getting into its history post-Republic, and finish out with some cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. The Legendary Lardy, or LAATI, saw the show as the Republic's trustworthy and effective gunship throughout the Clone Wars. While its firepower and maneuverability were praised, its durability left something to be desired. <laughs> The Lardys and their valuable cargoes of clone troopers took substantial losses in the early months of the war, leading to the desire for a replacement. Cygnus Spaceworks fulfilled this requirement through the development of the New Class Attack Shuttle. The New Class was designed with its role as a troop transport first, and as a gunship second. It featured an effective dual-wing design and stooped cockpit module around a compact trooper bay, capable of carrying 30 fully loaded troops. While lacking the speeder bikes that the LAATI could bring along, the troops aboard enjoyed a much greater degree of safety, a paramount concern for Cygnus which is expressed through a number of design features. Firstly, the shuttle featured a dorsal shield generating fin, which enveloped the ship in a protective bubble like a starfighter. The LAAT had no shielding, it had these blast doors which could stop some small arms fire, and an atmospheric shielding which just made sure that the oxygen stayed in when it was traveling through space, but it was an unshielded gunship. So just adding that feature puts the new in a completely different category. The tri-wing designs of the later Cygnus craft allowed for effective shield dispersion around all parts of the ship which lent them to greater protection. A feature possibly originating with the new with its dual wings and dorsal fin. The troop compartment itself was lined on each side with inbuilt seats, each with a crash harness that folded over the chest in the event of a hard landing. The ability for passengers to be seated and safely restrained during landings greatly improved their survivability in battlefronts all across the galaxy, in comparison with the LAAT's standing trooper bay. LAATs which took direct hits typically had all of their passengers killed when they crash landed, thrown about the compartment at lethal speeds with nothing to brace themselves with. The brutal Second Battle of Geonosis provided many bloody examples of this, with only General Kenobi and one other trooper surviving this hard crash landing, and even then they were seriously injured. Council member Coyote Mundi was badly wounded in an LAAT crash as well, and four Jedi were killed aboard their gunships during the landing phase of the Battle of Mercana. In comparison, crash landings in the New were much more survivable. During a diplomatic mission to Florum, an intercepted New was hit and crash landed, breaking in two upon impact. Despite this catastrophic damage, five of the six passengers survived and were without injury. Dead. A new transporting Cody and Crosshair took multiple hits from RPS-6 rocket launchers during their mission to Desix and survived to crash land despite those same launchers being capable of downing HMP gunships with a single shot, powerful enough to get through the droid gunship shielding and through the armor. When you add all these instances up, you see that the passengers in the trooper compartment enjoyed an above 50% survival rate, even when they weren't securely seated at the time of the crash. It's clear that Cygnus had delivered on their promise of making a much more survivable platform to GAR service, well suited to the assaults in heavily defended drop zones. And the cherry on top of the durability and shielding was the speed, 850 km per hour reducing the time the new spent under enemy guns from high atmosphere down to the ground. And it's not that far off from some fighters, and is even tied with the TIE Bomber. Its final survivability feature was the escape pod, which likely consisted of the head of the transport jettisoning itself from the body, being its own self-sufficient little craft that could navigate even deep space. Again, this feature would be seen in later Cygnus shuttle products. The troops disembarked through the forward hatch mounted under the cockpit, covered by a pair of medium dual laser cannons mounted on the cheeks of the shuttle's control section in swivel turrets. Two sets of dual light laser cannons, one on each side of the fuselage next to the wing joints, gave the shuttle a chance to drive off enemy fighters. The pilots were seated in a paired double canopy section reminiscent of the LAATI's design, lined with controls needed to operate the craft and which provided decent visibility. 
Unlike the LAAT, the new was well suited to operations in space as well as in atmosphere, and came equipped with an excellent Class 1 hyperdrive. That's faster than most starfighters out there in the galaxy. That hyperdrive, as well as the two full days of stores, gave the new significant range, allowing the shuttle greater use as an inspection and patrol vessel, carrying teams of specialists or officers to distant outposts. While newer stats up that range greatly, increasing it to an entire month, with a backup Class 12 hyperdrive, which is very slow, but really just something you hope to never use. The new was designed with carrier operations in mind, its wings folding up to a vertical position to allow greater deck space in a similar fashion to the V-19s and later Cygnus shuttles. And while it was initially envisioned to entirely replace the Lardy, this never did come to pass and instead the shuttle settled into its own specialized niche. While the new could ferry troops planet side quickly, its capabilities as a gunship were limited, without the hard points or heavy missile launchers of its competitor. The inclusion of that hyperdrive made the new expensive in comparison to the relatively cheap LAAT, which the Republic was able to pack into the hangar decks of acclimators and venators by the thousands. Such a widespread replacement would not be economical, and instead the news found roles as interfleet transports, ferrying personnel, messages, and valuable cargo, and were particularly popular among officers, who benefited from the secure transport for them and their staff. The new also spawned a sub-variant, the Rho-class transport shuttle, which we might cover at a later time. The new is said to cost 85,000 credits brand new, supposedly the same as the LAAT, but that doesn't really match up with the lore on all these improvements on shielding and that ridiculous Class 1 hyperdrive, with both of those features being the most expensive things to add to a ship. But since that also meant the maintenance cost would be high, perhaps that's why you can find them used for so cheap. Because when the Republic became the Empire, you could pick up a used new for 50,000 credits. That's less than the cost of a new TIE fighter. News were inherited into the Galactic Empire's military along with the rest of the Republic War materiel, and are rare in that they served for a considerable time before being phased out. The Empire got rid of the Lardis first, but retained the more modern and survivable news as it spread its reach across the galaxy, finally replacing the LAATs in a way the Republic never did. Under the Empire, they weren't doing planetary assaults as in the Clone Wars, and the new became more of a protective shuttle, not really in an attack shuttle role, seen used by enlisted personnel and officers alike, with even notables such as Grand Moff Tarkin and Admiral Rampart favoring the dependable new for its speed and protection and these would be eventually phased out by the new Lambda shuttles rolling off Cygnus production lines, which specialized in the transport and VIP role, dropping the attack transport capability of its predecessor. If it landed here on Earth, it would be about as long as three and a half giraffes laid end to end, or about one and a half school buses long. In flight mode with its wings extended, the new would be about as tall as an Olympic swimming pool is wide, or six SUVs laid end to end. Sadly, we have no stat on how heavy it is, although with a cargo capacity of 2 tons, you can get more than 2 full dewbacks in there, and with the volume, you're looking at about 140 Yoda species, if you ever caught them all. And as for cool facts and behind the scenes stuff, you can get your hand on the new class and use it to drop off troops yourself via mods for Empire at War such as Fall of the Republic and Republic at War. While a lot of this info comes from the Clone Wars Visual Guide, the Campaign Guide, Encyclopedia of Starfighters and Other Vehicles, and Rise of the Separatist Guidebook. If you made it this far, please hit that like button, share the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to see more. That's all the best ways to help me out. But most important of all, remember, it doesn't matter how great your ground troops are if they get blown up in the sky. And the Force will be with you. Always.